Kanban on the air. Thanks for tuning in to Instagram Growth Podcast. We love having you here and it's our mission to bring you all of the latest and greatest tips, skills and know-how to make you the best Instagram marketer that you can be. We know that you have it in you and we are going to show you how. Now, let's get started. Welcome to the Instagram Growth Podcast with your host, Anne. My guest today is Ryan Rieger, the author of Streams of Income and several other books. In addition to being an author, Ryan is an e-commerce expert and the founder of several businesses. He is also a course creator and has a podcast called Streams of Income Radio. So welcome, Ryan. Thank you for agreeing to be on my podcast with me today. And this is my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you today. Yeah, cool. I think that my listeners and my audience are going to get a lot of value from today's episode. So can you please give a brief introduction of who you are and what are you doing? What is your area of expertise? Sure. Yeah. So I um, teach people how to make money online. I love. I help them to uh, create multiple streams of income so they can live their dreams and nowadays, that's very much done through social media. That's a great way to to, uh, to reach folks. Um, so I started selling on Amazon back in about 2011. Uh, to make a long story short, turned that into multiple courses, books about selling on Amazon. But now I'm getting more broad, just showing that that's not the only way to make money online, obviously. And there are uh, three main ways to do that. And with se- selling physical products, just being one of them. And I, I just I love helping people create streams of income so they can get out of debt, uh, quit the job that they if they hate their job and they want to get out of their job, spend more time with their family. So it's <laughs> kind of what I've been putting been in the last few years doing is getting that message out. Yeah, that's cool. And how close are your nowadays duties uh, connected with social media? Yeah. For sure. Is how how am I how am I connected? Well, um, the big thing for me is the Facebook groups that I have. Um, most of my courses have a Facebook uh, community involved with it. So having my customers be in Facebook groups uh, is vital to be able to listen to their needs, answer their questions. Um, but also, I have my um, my own Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of that. Uh, just trying to get more try to serve more people, trying to let more people know that, hey, there is an option to, uh, you know, to be able to create multiple streams of income. And I'd love to help you if you feel like it's a fit. So yeah, I'm, I'm on social media all the time. Yeah, that's cool. So trying to be more social. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And you recently even wrote a book named uh, Streams of Income. So yeah. tell me more about that. Sure. Yeah, it's a small little book. Fits in the palm of my hand, actually. And I wrote, <laughs> did it so that it, people will actually read it because I don't know if there's anybody out there like me. I got books on my shelf here that I've not read yeah, all of I can them. See. <laughs> and they're long. They're big, thick books. And so uh, mine's short. And it's just about the three main ways to make money online. One is selling physical products. The other one is creating an income out of something you're passionate about, a, a topic or, you know, some you're something you're passionate about or knowledgeable about, like through books, courses, online training, all that. And the third being coaching and consulting. Now, as you know, there's way more ways to make money online than that, like affiliate marketing and, you know, people that are in your audience who are running social media for folks, all that can be done online. But as far and that would for me, that would kind of fall into coaching and consulting anyway. So I see those as the three main foundational ways to make money online. And I uh, just uh, I have about 16 different streams of income and uh, wow. it allowed me to do some really cool things and to to serve folks. And my heart is I want more people to be able to do what they want to do to get out of debt. Uh, and starting a business is a great way to do it. Yeah, cool. So you claim to have over 16 different streams of income. So tell us about those because that's really fascinating. Sure. Yeah, well, some of them, not all of them are million dollar streams. Actually, you know, some of them are really, (laughs) really small. Like I have a Kindle book that maybe makes me $20 a month. Uh, so, but there, <laughs> I have some big ones and some little ones and, and some of it, I, I don't really even have to think about It just comes in every month. And there's some of it that I have to work at every month. Uh, it's just a matter of, once you have a topic, 
uh, that you're passionate about, once you have a main message or a main skill, it can turn into so many different things. So like if, you know, let's say, for example, th that I am really in a lot of your folks that are running campaigns for people running social media for folks, if they, you know, they, they can do it for people, but they also could create a course out of that knowledge because there might be people that can't afford to pay some of your, your folks that are listening to do it. Yeah. So come out with a, a lower price course and that's another stream. So you got the one where you're doing it for people, the one where you're showing them how to through books or courses. Uh, and then you could even could train people how to do what you do uh, and almost <laughs> franchise out your whole model. So it really, it's not unrelated things. Like on the weekends, my son and I don't run a lemonade stand. And then on, during the week, I'm doing courses and books. It's, they all kind of tie in together. Yeah, and that's really fascinating. You know, when I hear these numbers, like 16 different streams of income, it sounds a bit fantastic. Uh -huh. And for me, it's even hard uh, to imagine what these streams could be like. That's cool. And you know, uh, my audience, people who are the subscribers or just listeners of Instagram Growth Podcast certainly know how important it is to create good, interesting, valuable content. Right. And of course, it takes a lot of time and effort and not every Instagrammer can just, you know, uh, listen to the podcast or take an Instagram course and become a true professional in Instagram marketing. But when they finally come to it and start producing valuable, creative content so what can be uh the way for them to monetize their content sure so you cut out a little bit there ways to monetize their content if they're just kind of started out as a hobby is that what you're kind of asking yeah yeah okay um well just think about what else so the question i, I like to ask is what else might my, my my audience be interested in so for example my wife uh listens to or watches a lot of these fashion bloggers on instagram always watching their stories so one quick way that folks like that can make extra money, of course, is by, you know, doing brand deals, like partnering up with the brands that they're recommending. Um, I actually think a lot of them uh, could create their own products. So instead of sending everybody over to, you know, some other purse or line of clothing or um, closer might be kind of hard to create your own brand of clothing. That's a kind of a, that's a mm -hmm. deal, but like if you're a photographer, you could easily have your own camera bag or, you know, some basic camera equipment and that be your product and you're, you're sending everybody over to your product instead of making these small little uh, commissions. I know a photographer that's on Instagram, she has her own course about how to do photography. So she's taking that love of photography. It was just a hobby. And now it's a business. She obviously is doing sessions for people live. Mm -hmm. But then she also has a course online. She's on Instagram. She's doing brand deals with all these big brands. Uh, and so she's and she also has a, a, a coaching program. Well, she'll talk to like essentially mentor you one on one uh, if you want to start a business uh, with photography. So there's so many ways that your listeners can take that love of whatever that topic is and turn it into multiple streams of income. Yeah, that's true. And if it's not a big business, not a, like a big company, and just a personal account of somebody who started their social media accounts as a fun hobby. So can this fun hobby somehow turn into a business? Absolutely. Yeah, my goodness. Um, I mean, you can totally just do it as a hobby. And if you love doing that, that's great. But there is a way, guys, to make money from something that you are passionate about. So just look at just do a search like on some of these um, do a search in Facebook, find these groups, find a topic that you are kind of interested in. There will be a group around that. There is um, there's a group that has like a couple hundred thousand people in it. And they're all talking about Instapot, this big, you know, this thing over here in the States that it's a, it's a basically a, a crock pot that also is a pressure cooker and they're talking recipes. <laughs> and so you could take that passion for that and turn that into a business, like a recipe book. Um, there are so many niches out there and really probably the more, uh, tight the niche, the, the doesn't not something really broad, like how to make money online or how to cook more like how to cook with an Instapot or how to raise this kind of horse or how to do this type of photography, the, the more niche, the better. So yes, your audience can totally take that passion and turn it into an income. And what about you personally? Did you start your business as a fun hobby? 
Um, actually, no, my business start oh, it has always been a business, but it's <laughs> turned into fun for me. So I love what I do. Honestly, Anna, it's I feel like uh, I'm um I, I don't really know whether I'm working or playing like this interview right now. Yeah, technically it's probably work, but I enjoy this type of stuff. It's fun for me. I look forward to getting up and doing what I do every day. So uh, it, it is definitely work, but it's not like, Oh, I hate to do it. I don't want to get up in the yeah. morning. It's not like that for me at all. And I desperately want that for more people. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I think that if you work and you enjoy your work, then this is like, this is what you should do. And this Absolutely. is how you should help people. Yeah. Okay. So, and do you do a lot of with social media giants like Facebook, for example? Uh, so Facebook groups. So do you do a lot of with that? Yes, absolutely. Facebook groups are essential to my business. Um, I've learned that uh, for me, those communities of people that are my students, um, when we create a course, we add a Facebook community component to that. And when we first started doing that, we thought, hey, this is going to be great. We're going to give them lots more value by being able to answer their questions. But really, I think that I get more value out of having that group because now I get to listen to them, figure out what else they need. Where are they getting stuck in the material? What other products or services can I create to meet that need? And so we've been able to monetize some of these things further just by listening to my audience. So Facebook groups are huge for me and my business. And I encourage anybody that's out that's creating content to build a community, even if it's not if you even if you don't have a course, have some type of community and Facebook groups are great because everybody's already on there. Uh, get a community of people together so that you can start learning from your audience. What does your audience need? You'll know then what, what kind of content to put out. And how do you connect with your audience on Facebook? Do you use uh, live videos or just chatting? Yeah, um, I get lots and lots of mess Facebook Messenger messages. Um, I'm in my groups every day answering questions. Um, I obviously post on my own personal, uh, on my business page. Um, but yeah, lots of lots of chatting back and forth and answering questions in those groups. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. And what about Instagram? Do you use Instagram for chatting with your audience? Um, not, with honestly, me? not so much. It's, I mean, I maybe could. I, I just don't know that a lot of my audience is there right now. Um, I use it to obviously post pictures and post content. Uh, I use, I put my podcast on IGTV, um, the clip version of it, the small clip. But I'm honestly, and I know this is I know this is about Instagram growth, so I could probably learn from your audience <laughs> and you on how to grow that more and reach more of that audience. Um, it's not really been a tool that I've used uh, for engaging with my audience too much yet. Yeah, but I think it's also a good way. Also, you can go live or sure. just chat with your audience right. under one of your posts and comments or so on. Yeah. Okay, and what are your thoughts considering email marketing? You know, in one of my previous episodes, uh -huh. I talked to an email specialist, uh -huh. and after that interview, I understood that email marketing isn't that hard as right. it seemed to be. Sure. So what do you think about oh, that? Oh, man, I think so. I was just at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego um, about a week ago. And everybody was saying that email marketing and email newsletters are coming back. And the reason for that is, you know, as you know, I could grow a following of a million people on Instagram, but they could turn, change something, some algorithm or Instagram could just go away and I would lose all that. So your audience has to find a way to get those audience members into an email list uh, so that you own that forever. And that is essentially your, your business is your list. And so it's super, super, super important ways to do that would be free downloads. So you do a post on Instagram or Facebook or go live and say, give out some really good, amazing content, but then say, Hey, grab the ebook copy of my book for free, go to this. And there's an opt in there to grow that list. So you got to, Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms are a wonderful way to engage with your audience. But you've, if you want to grow your business, you've got to get their information and email is the best way to do that. And how can our audience build that email list? Yeah, so the biggest do? one is just come up with free things that you can give away. So maybe um, let's say that I was an Instagram expert. I might come up with a um, some type of uh, one page download for the five things to uh, five tips 
before going live on Instagram, the five things you need to know, or the five best ways to grow your Instagram account. Uh, any tip that you've given out, you guys, your audience probably already has this content already. They've already given it out. But just package it up. Like you as a podcast, you could say your download could be like, you know, our five top, our top five episodes, uh, summarize like a summary of them or transcripts or it just anything that is valuable enough for somebody to say, I want that and I'm willing to give my email address for it. So, you know, a lead magnet is what they need to come up with. Yeah, lead magnet. Uh -huh. Okay. And a lot of our audience is compromised of social media managers. So what advice would you have for them? Yeah, so I would say to them is uh, find ways just to add value to your clients. Um, I would tell them that uh, communities are huge. So don't just be have their I think their audience needs to go in and then be commenting on those in, on those posts on the comments they're getting comment back engage with those people it's not about just hey posting all these things and you're not gonna hire a company to handle it for you and just completely not even think about it i mean i guess you can but that's not the best way to really grow it uh is people want to do business with people and so if you even if you're a big company and you've hired a a, a manager to run it Get engaged with those folks. So as a social media manager, if I was telling your client, your people, your listeners that are social media managers, encourage your clients to engage with those people that are commenting all those posts. I would tell them to um, get get a community together, get a Facebook group around that topic, learn from what else does that group need. The more feedback you can get from your audience, the better, because then you'll know what they need, where they're at, and how you can serve them in other ways. Yeah, sure. And if we go back a bit to the content issue, yeah. so you know, uh, many people when uh, always striving for some new ideas, they forget that they can simply reuse the yeah. content that they have already created. Yeah. So do you agree? Absolutely. I went to a whole session at Social Media Marketing World about repurposing content. So one way to do it, um, I'll just read through a couple of these. These are really cool. I mean, some of it we've probably all heard, but one of them was really cool to me. Um, so what are they? Yeah. So if the first one is copy it to other places. So use it as an email, turn it into a download. Uh, number two was create an excerpt of, of the, like if you created a big blog post or whatever, turn it into something smaller, more digestible. Number three is go back and update that content. So maybe you posted a blog or did a video a long time ago, and maybe there's been some changes uh, to it. Refresh the headlines, refresh the images. Um, number four was reformat it. So how else can I bring this story to life? Pick something that did really well. And then maybe if it was a blog post, turn it into a video. If it was a video, turn it into a blog post. Make it more shareable. Use infographics. Go live to talk about it. Uh, just basically reform. Take that same, whatever content, whatever format that content is in, just think about all the other things it could be. Uh, curate it and repackage it as a set. So like with your podcast, it could be our, our top five podcasts uh, and just like list them with some information about them. And the sixth one I thought was really cool. I've never really thought about doing this, but is to multiply it. So let's say that um, I was going to put out a piece of content saying the top five ways of, you know, guys can make money online today. Well, I could then just tweak that and say the top 10 ways that women can make money online or the top 10 ways a college student can make money online. Yeah. It, a lot of the same principles will probably apply to those all those different groups. So multiply it by age um, or by demographic, by location. Uh, you know, so how do you make money online if you live in Russia? How do you make money online if you live in Mexico? <laughs> you know, all you could totally just go crazy with that and probably come up with all. So just multiply that content and hit a, hit a different demographic with that same exact piece. You may have to tweak the headline, tweak the some of the information to make it accurate to that group. But that's just another way to uh, repurpose your content. Yeah, I'll, I'll let me course. give credit to the person that was Melanie Diesel, D I E Z E L. And it was her, that was her session at social media marketing world. Of course. But, uh, you know, I think that all of these ways may not be that obvious for everyone, 
but a person who has it, I mean, a uh, kind of marketing spirit, uh -huh. uh, this person will sooner or later find a way to take the most out of this. Right. Yeah. Um, by the way, Ryan, what traits of character or what skills should a true social media marketer have from your point of view? Mm. So what uh, traits of character should a person have to see all of these ways to repurpose the content? And yeah, to be, I think you just have to be uh, teachable, just, have to be willing to learn. Um, realize that just because you know how to post something on Facebook and uh, that, you know, that, that there's going to be new strategies that come out. So be willing to uh, adapt and be willing to adjust uh, Facebook and Instagram. They're going to do things that get fr that are that frustrate you. What worked last year may not work today. So be willing to adjust your strategy. Yeah. Okay. Do you think you have all of these uh, qualities? All of these. Oh no, skills? no. That's why I hire people to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I have. Um, I have a social media manager for me. Um, she uh, handles pretty much all of it, and then I just go in and make comments. I I definitely oversee the process, help her find content, but she's really good at taking my podcast, taking all content that I put out, and then putting it into the various you know, channels. So, you know, I, I've learned a long time ago that I'm, I don't do something that I'm not good at. Uh, so I'd hire folks that are smarter than me to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what do you usually do when you are tired of your everyday duties? Mm. So where do you go to find inspiration? Yeah. For me, I, I, prayer is a big one. A time with my family recharges me. Uh, just even talking to if I have a I'm having a day when I'm, you know, kind of getting tired or don't want to do it. If I just have a conversation with somebody, one of my students, um, that is as me talking to people, helping them come up with way. If I get the focus off of me and start thinking about how I can help them, that gives me energy. I, I love being able to help people. It's so much fun to get on a call and and kind of dive into somebody's business and ask them, you know, what are you working on and how can I help? And so when I start to think about them instead of me, then I forget about the bad day I'm having and it, uh, I'm all excited again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome advice. Thank you so much, Ryan, for coming yeah. on the show and sharing your knowledge with people. I really Welcome. appreciate that. And I'm sure my audience yeah. does the same. So and where, where can be the best place for people to find more about you? Sure. Or to My website's Ryan Rieger, R-E-G-E-R.com. Um, you can on the right at the top there is the link. Grab my book for free. It's Dreams of Income. Right, grab the ebook version of it. So yeah, RyanRieger.com. Probably the best place. Yeah, excellent. I also highly recommend everybody listen to oh, your you. podcast because there is much yeah. value in that. And what message would you like to leave my listeners? Sure, this is something with? that I, I saw, I heard at Social Media Marketing World again. And it was really profound to me is that I know there's might be a lot of people in your audience that say, I only have this many followers. I only have 50 people on my email list. I only have 1,200 people on Instagram. Well, guys, that's still 1,200 people. Imagine if you had 1,200 people show up to your home and they were ready for a party. I mean, you would be like, oh my gosh, I got to get my house. Or even if you had 10 people show up, even if you had five people show up to your house wanting to learn from you, they were like, they're ready, eager to learn from you. Guys, that is a big deal. Every single one of those followers is a real person. So do not despise the day of small beginnings. Don't think I only have this much. It's a great platform it's great stepping stone into more, but really, really, really serve those folks that you have. Treat them as if they, if you treat your account, like if you have a 1 million people, because those are real folks that are kind of turning out every day, every week to hear from you and give them great content. And then your, your, your audience is going to grow, but get rid of that word only. I only have this much, just keep growing it, keep doing it. Yeah, thank you. Thank oh, you, friends, so much for coming today, for sharing your knowledge, for sharing that valuable information with my audience. So thank you oh, once again. Have a good too. day and hope to see you one more time in my future love episodes it. or in one of my future webinars. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank right, you. Bye. bye. This is a podcast sponsored by Combin.com. Grow and manage your Instagram safely and organically with Combin Growth and Combin Scheduler. Instagram promotion is easy. Combin.com